really interesting story uh, that broke a couple of days ago about Diane Feinstein. Now, it's old, so I don't I don't want you to get the the wrong idea. It's back from 1984 when uh, Feinstein was the the mayor of San Francisco. I'm not telling you this because I think Diane Feinstein. It's not a good story. It's about uh, her defending the Confederate flag. Um, I'm not saying that because I'm telling you that she believes the same things today that she believed in 1984. I'm not telling you that she put up the Confederate flag because she's deeply racist. No. And I'm not saying that like, ha ha, I'm not saying that, wink. No, I'm really not saying that. But I think it is an important story because it gives you a sense that Diane Feinstein, her whole career, has done nothing by political but political calculation. Everything is political calculation. So that was also in play in this case. So let me quote Law and Crime, Colin Kambacher writing here, and then I'll explain the context. Uh, they explained that California senior Senator Dianne Feinstein once fought and pushed for the prosecution of black activists who opposed her repeated efforts to fly the Confederate flag at San Francisco City Hall. Now that is bizarre. Why in the world would you want to fly the Confederate flag on City Hall in San Francisco? I mean, you got no excuse about history and heritage and culture and all that stuff. So. And they explained back then in 84, early in the year, Feinstein okayed the flying of the stained banner, also known as the Confederate battle flag at City Hall as part of a quote, historic display. Again, absolutely bizarre, it's not Tennessee, it's not Mississippi. I don't know why San Francisco would wanna honor this, the Confederate flag with a historic display. Okay, on April 15th, 1984, a communist organizer, Richard Bradley, outfitted in a Union Army uniform, scaled a 50-foot flagpole at the Civic Center in San Francisco and removed the Confederate battle flag. The remnants of that flag were then burned by a Union member. Go get him. As a small fire raged, a crowd of black activists, socialists and unionists broke into a chorus of the anti-slavery anthem, John Brown's Body. Okay, look. Things like that just happened recently with the covering of the Confederate monuments, some of the Confederate monuments being taken down, etc. And but look, you gotta be careful and you shouldn't break the law. And if you're the mayor, you gotta enforce law, I understand that. But it's not the hill I would have fought on, but she was apparently very mad about that. So at the time, Feinstein, who was in the running for the Democratic vice presidential nomination, was seeking to curry favor with the Dixiecrats, who would be arriving in town three months later for the Democratic National Convention. She had the flag put back up. Look, I'd be really surprised if Dianne Feinstein is racist and loves the Confederacy. That would be bizarre. I don't think that's the issue here. She wanted the vice presidency in 1984, and they were saying that it was gonna be a woman, and they were right, it was a woman, it just happened to be Geraldine Ferraro. So she's angling for it, and she's like, mm, how can I convince the Southern Democrats? Because why, why in San Francisco? How can I convince the Southern Democrats that I'm with them? Oh, I got it, I'll fly a Confederate flag in San Francisco. Elect a real progressive, okay. Um, so. The activists are like, no, no, we're not gonna let a Confederate flag fly over San Francisco, not gonna happen. So they take it down again. Um, and of course, again, Feinstein is enraged. This time, however, Bradley was arrested on charges of vandalism, the second time he took it down. According to a contemporary account of the pretrial maneuvering uh, by the Spartacus League's in-house publication, Workers Vanguard, which features a roundup of black press coverage on the issue, Feinstein's office worked with San Francisco's then district attorney, Arlo Smith, on the prosecution. Of particular concern to Feinstein was that Bradley make restitution to the city of San Francisco for the destroyed flag. So she wanted a black activist to pay for a Confederate flag. Let it go, man, you made your point. Hey, Dixon Kratz, I'll do whatever you want. I'm your girl, whatever, okay, you made your point. You're gonna go and insist on his prosecution and insist that he pay it back, all right. As news of Bradley's prosecution spread, phone calls and telegrams swamped Feinstein's office and finally, Feinstein relented, the exhausted mayor promised not to fly the Confederate battle flag again. 
only after she had to be convinced and there was a world of pressure. Aren't you exhausted trying to get so called democratic politicians to be progressive? But wait, the story isn't over. Feinstein apparently wasn't quite content with this turn of events and still had time to make her case to the Democratic Party power brokers. So after Bradley's trial faded from the headlines, near the end of June, Feinstein raised the stars and bars, the first flag of the Confederacy. Yeah, no, that's not a progressive. And, and it's certainly not someone who's gonna fight for you. And, and look, it, and if you don't know the context, one last thing that's important. Again, it isn't to go back in time and say she can't change. Uh, I'm, if you asked her about the Confederate flag now and she still wants to fly it, Mike, I, you never know what they am, but I'd be really, really surprised. I'm trying to be fair to her, okay? But every time that she's had an opportunity to make a political point like this, she has attacked the left, not supported it. It's not the only time. So one time, uh, Kamala Harris, of all people, was doing a prosecution. Uh, and it was a really high profile case of a murder, but she didn't want to pursue the death penalty. Feinstein called a press conference and attacked Kamala Harris back then and said, no, we need a death penalty. Why? She wanted to appeal to the, in, in the general election to the right wing and say, don't worry. If you need someone to punch the left wing in the face, Diane Feinstein is your person. Over and over and over again. She says on Medicare for all, she's not gonna do it now. She's been in office for 50 years, that she might do it at a later time. <laughs> she says, no, 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 it's not the time. It's not the time to help progressives. For Dianne Feinstein, it is never the time to help progressives. It's always the time to help herself. Elect a real progressive in California. You know who I think it should be, Allison Hartson. AllisonHartson.com will have the links below, but if you think it's someone else, do what you gotta do, but make sure that California gets the Senate it deserves, a progressive one. You just watched the video by the Young Turks, home of the revolution. If you'd like to get a lot more than that, get the full show by becoming a member. TYTnetwork.com slash join.